Okay, uh, again, we plotted and planned, and you don't know how much work it was for us to know that we can have a sermon now based on uh, not Psalms 12, but 1 Thessalonians 2.13. Right. About when ye received the word of God, ye, re ye heard it, uh, which ye re heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. <laughs> All right, so let's stand out of respect to the word of God. And we're going to begin reading here at 1 Thessalonians 2, 13 to 20. And... Um, Amen. The Bible says, mm -hmm. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, mm -hmm. ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, mm -hmm. Amen. which effectually worketh also in you that believe. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins all way for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Mm -hmm. But we brethren being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Mm -hmm. Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope, or joy, or crown of rejoicing, are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. Amen. Amen. All right, so let's pray. Father, thank you for this great truth. And help us to, uh, again, just relish your word and in jesus name we ask it amen amen, amen. and so the model church is a strong people now it's been said you know occasionally you can find a good church because they got a good pastor but the church ain't no kind <coughs> and there's plenty of churches like that yeah. and then occasionally you can find a good church because the people are a good people but the pastor's no good mm -hmm. it's kind of rare to find a church where both the pastor and the people are dynamite <laughs> amen when you got good people and a good pastor you got a good church amen. amen amen and that's ideally what the model church would be amen the model church would be a strong people because they're strong in faith because mm -hmm. they they, they are, they're strong in the word they love the lord they love the book and they believe the book and so with that combination being a people and congregation and pastor that that's the way it's going to do what God wants it done. And of course, it's interesting too. I think that as they put the word church together, of course, they use different colors because again, the church isn't just one color either. <laughs> you know, we almost have to say that today. Right. And uh, just let's stay uh, relevant, you know. So, number one, they receive the word of God as the word of God. Now, this is what's wrong with these new contemporary quote unquote Bible critics and scholars. As they come to the Bible, looking at it only academically, they're looking at the Bible like it's just the words of men. And that's the problem. It's not just the words of men. Never has been, never will be. See, you got to approach it with the right heart and the right attitude. you got to believe that God is and He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Amen? And so He said, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because... When ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. All the new versions treat the Bible like it's the words of men. Right. And can be lightly changed to, well, this word or that word. And right. It's not that. As long as you get the message. No, no, I ain't going to get the right message without the right words. 
I better have a pure, preserved, amen, seven times purified word of God, amen, and words of God. Because that will be effectually working also in you that believe. That's what's great about God's real words. When you get it in you, man, it starts doing something to you. It starts changing you. You start lining up with it. You don't go like a new version to line up with you. But yet that's the plan, though. You know, the WEF have made it clear. You did, I, I'm sure you've seen this fellow. He claims to be of some Jewish ancestry. I can't remember his name. But he, uh, the WEF, he was broke, boasting and bragging how, well, eventually, we'll finally put together our own Bible and we'll say what we want it to say. And through AI, we'll have our own Bible through AI. And it'll be what we want it to say. And, and he's poo-pooing the old Bible and everybody trying to tell us what to do and say because of some holy God somewhere. And he himself is, is a homosexual. And yet he's speaking all the time for because he's Jewish and he's got a heavy accent. And uh, he's speaking for the for you know Santa Claus, Klaus, and all these other guys that are part of the WEF. Because mm -hmm. they're going somewhere with all this junk. Right. You know, they're, and they're, they're just telling you the next step they plan to do, to implement right. And of course, and they need to be resisted at all costs mm -hmm. and at every hand. Mm -hmm. Amen. They think they can come into the World Health Organization and through that take over the world. Well, it ain't going to work here. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because I don't recognize the who. Right. Maybe you do, but I don't. Yep. I don't recognize Whoville myself. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So, praise the Lord. God's word is true. And of course, uh, <laughs> We know the majesty of the words of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Paul said that it, it effectually worketh also in you that believe. Like Jesus said in John 6, 63. Let's look at it. Mm -hmm. Jesus told us that that's how, what his words are like. And that's how we could recognize his words. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, they're spirit in their life, aren't they? Right. Mm -hmm. God's word or spirit and life. And believe me, that's not the RSV. That's not any of these perverted new versions they have. John 6, 63. Amen. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words, W-A-R-D-S, the words that I speak in you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. So that's why then if I can get his words in my heart, man, they'll give me life and they'll be in my mouth and they'll, I'll be able to speak life to others. That's right. And I can have a great vibrant testimony for the Lord because it's his words in me doing the work and it's God in me doing the work. Amen. That's right. Amen. You notice that Jesus said here that the words that I speak in you, they are spirit and they are life. He did not say they are thoughts. Right. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He did not say that they're thoughts I convey to you or ideas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. The theory of heliocentricity. Did he say they're just a theory of heliocentricity? You know. If you go by every word and what it says, amen. God made it all. The universe. Mm -hmm. Amen. But in the beginning, he created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness on face. Of, so it's definitely a geocentric universe. Yeah. Amen. But yet we have a lot of contrary thoughts to the Word of God, don't we? Mm -hmm. And ideas. <laughs> because we don't take his words literally. We can't take God's words to be absolutely a fact and pure, preserved words. That's why important, it's so important you get this. Amen? Amen? It's very important you get this. Don't be like these people following Satan's son that's soon going to arrive with his name, number, and mark of the beast. Stay true to the Lord. Stay true to Scripture. Recognize that Jesus is coming and His coming is right on schedule. Amen? Mm -hmm. 
Because his words are effectual. They work on you. They do things to you. To keep you lined up with what he wants you to be. Because that's why you have that indwelling Holy Ghost of God in there. Mm -hmm. And his spirit bears witness with your spirit. That... Mm -hmm. And that's why when you, if somebody tells you, you, I can't get it, I can't get it. Well, man, I, I'm going to be praying for you that you can get saved. Because, yeah, you'll never get it if you ain't saved. Right. Right. You know what I mean? And that seems to be the problem, doesn't it? Yes. The Word of God works effectively in the lives of people who truly believe it. Right. But of course, our neighbors and friends, you work with them, I work with them, they don't believe it, and boy, aren't they lost as a goose in a snowstorm. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> when the scholars believe that the King James Version is just a mere translation of men, they forfeit the pro powerful working of the scriptures in their lives. There's no effectual working of God in their life. Right. So we would expect them to be blind as bats backing up. Mm -hmm. Amen? And that's what's going on. And that's what's wrong with these perverted versions. So they received it through men, but they received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. Amen? Received it as it worked in their lives. And then secondly, we see they became followers of strong churches and stood fast despite severe persecution. Now Paul himself had been stoned in Lystra. But praise the Lord, they picked up Timothy there. And now Timothy's a part of his entourage and ministry too. And he can have Timothy, the younger fellow, running around doing this, a lot of the menial tasks. And running to the churches and taking up offerings and so forth and so on. And doing the things that needed to be done. And so they saw some things. The Jews on purpose were out to persecute anybody who loved, who loved Jesus and believed in Jesus. Just like they had Jesus nailed to that Roman cross. And so Paul talks about that there. And we're going to get to get there in a minute. But verse 14, For ye brethren became followers of the churches of God. Now, there's plenty of churches out there. I always like to make fun of the one. Uh, I go by one every day, and it says, ah, Assembly of God. And I always think there's something wrong with it. any church. It's, its initials are, ah, Assembly of God. Uh, I could think of a lot of better things to call myself if I was trying to represent Jesus Christ of the Bible. Amen? Amen. But uh, the churches of God... Of course, are God's churches, and therefore, being God's churches, they must have the Word of God that they go by, mm -hmm. and they must be all about that book from beginning to end. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be a follower of strong churches, then you got to stand fast despite all the persecutions that will come your way, because they will come. The devil's real, and he if he can't come at you directly, he'll come at you indirectly. If he can't come at you through your family, then he'll come from outside your family. But you're under attack. Mm -hmm. Plan on it. Expect it. Right. Right. There's a reason Satan has his churches and God has his churches. Right. And believe you me, there's many a counterfeit church Satan has out there. Yep. Amen. Number three, they escape the Jew's guilt. Now, the Jews are out to persecute Jesus and his churches. Amen? Mm -hmm. Who both killed the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God. Right. And are contrary to all men and yet the world says, oh no, Judaism is just another legitimate monosyllable religion like you know, Muslims or anything else or Islam. No, it isn't. No, no. That's the religion that killed Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. right. That's the religion that wants to see you killed. Mm -hmm. right. Paul had it balanced. Mm -hmm. See, this is long before the Zionist movement infected churches like it does today. Yeah. But believe you me, the Baptists are the worst being infected with this mm -hmm. somehow. Oh, we can't say anything bad about a Jew. Sure you can. Because mm -hmm. the Lord says they're not my people. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. Not my people. They used to be. Right. 
That's why they're in such trouble. That's why they're so contrary. That's why if one of them gets saved, it is a big deal. <laughs> And I'll tell you, when the Apostle Paul got saved, it was a big deal. <laughs> so Paul, of all things, to say it, because he ought to know, he ought to have known, he, he was right there, he was their number one man, wasn't he? Right. Who killed the Lord Jesus, who killed the prophets, who persecutes believers, who did not please God, who opposed all men, who shut people out. And as a result of their guilt, they became full of their sins. And then last but not least, they brought wrath up unto themselves. Now it's important you get that. Paul mentioned it in chapter 1 there, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Which delivered us from the wrath to come. We know that Revelation 15.1 and Revelation 16.1 says God's final pouring out of his wrath on this earth. That it's like these seven bowls being poured out on the earth. The book of Revelation is very end when Satan's son's running the show. So it's important you get this. Now he's mentioning it again. Mm -hmm. And it's important you get this. Because if you ain't careful, you'll start listening to even Baptist preachers. And pretty soon they'll start leading you down a path and say, oh, well, uh, there ain't no rapture. Uh, you're not one of them dispensationalists, are you? Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll have you convinced that either all that's already happened. It's all all that book of Revelation's already happened back there when the Jews' uh, city was overrun by Titus, or uh, that somehow or another there's not any rapture, no church. It's just going to be a rapture at the very end of the seven-year tribulation period. There's no pre-tribulation rapture, no God's church. But no, sure there is because that's why he he said in Revelation one. 15.1, 16.1, when God's wrath is finally poured out on the earth, when his wrath is finally culminated there on the whole earth, as a result of these people rejecting him all their, from the beginning. And when, when did this happen? God's wrath upon the Jewish people has been evident by the anti-Semitism throughout all time of, in history. And when did that happen? Why did it happen? Well, we go, let's turn with me to Matthew. This is when they, 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 they asked for it. See, the Jews asked for it. When they crucified Jesus, they asked God to pour his wrath on them. Right. Don't pour it on Pilate. He's innocent, but we'll take it because our leaders are absolutely convinced Jesus is a fraud. So this is when they asked for it. Let's look at it. Matthew 27, 25. We're not anti-Semitists. We're not anti-Semitic. But they asked for God's wrath, and they've been under God's wrath from that day to this. Matthew 27, 25. Now, once in a while, a Jew gets saved, and that's a wonderful thing. When Pilate told them, I am innocent of the blood of this just person, see ye to it. Verse 25. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. And it seems to have been to this day and this hour. Yeah. And they really resented the Holocaust when Adolf Hitler put him through all the things he did. But What can we say to these things? So when Paul's discussing this, notice what he says here. He says, yes, ye also have suffered the like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. Okay? Here's what Paul says. Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us, and they please not God and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins always, for the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. Mm -hmm. So, this persecution is the rotten fruit of slaying the innocent blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The completion of this wrath of God will occur in the tribulation period, which is called Jacob's trouble in Jeremiah 30, verse 7, and Daniel 12, 1. And the word uttermost is the description of the international punishment of the nation of Israel, as even today in the United Nations, they're hated of all the other nations. 
Why do all of them, and a lot of them are big, a lot bigger, and even more prosperous, but yet why do they all just hate Israel and the Jews so much? And the honest to God answer is, because again, most of them are Catholic, and being Catholic, they've done a good job of persuading all their church members, and that's why Adolf Hitler thought he was perfectly at liberty to kill all of them that he wanted to. Because they, th their attitude was, well, look what you did to our Savior. Well, we're going to make sure you pay for that. Because Adolf himself was a Bavarian Catholic. Right. Born and raised. Baptized, never, ex never excommunicated from the Catholic Church. He wasn't a Protestant. Right. So when he says uttermost, uttermost does not mean forever because the believing remnant of Israel will inherit the everlasting covenant of God. Mm -hmm. There is that group of them that are going to be converted in a day. Amen. Israel will be converted in a day, the Bible says. Amen. So that's why, as you know, we are always careful about, don't you be saying something about Israel, something about Israel, when the Bible clearly teaches eight different Israels. Right. Just keep track which one you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. Which one are you talking about? And so, sure enough, because they were the principal agents involved in wrongfully executing Jesus, well, they've got to continue to bear their part in the economy of God. Number four, they possess a strong fellowship. Yes, they can make it tough on you just like they made it tough on Jesus. And there's some tough times coming, buddy. But you can handle it. By the grace of God, you'll make it. Amen. Now, the Apostle Paul himself, I put this picture up to remind us what he went through at Lystra. Paul had been forced to flee because of persecution. Paul wished to return. Paul was opposed by Satan. Paul was stoned and left for dead by the Jews in Iconium. And uh, so, praise the Lord. He come back to life, and away they went. And praise the Lord, he's he, he's going to keep the gospel going. We read there in sixteen eleven how sure enough God put him on a straight course, and uh, eventually the word will even go to London, England. And before you know it, the king will finally print a Bible, and next thing you know, we all got it in our hands. <laughs> it's an amazing thing that in spite of persecution, in spite of people hating God, hating the Bible, and being under God's wrath, still it got done. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen? Amen. And you ain't going to stop God. You ain't going to slow God down. Are you kidding me? No way. And so amen. Amen. And so they possessed a strong fellowship. Paul had been forced to flee because of persecution. Paul wished to return, but he was opposed by the devil and we can have a good fellowship with one another because we know we're paying a price. We're in the fight together and uh, standing true to the Lord and His Word. Let's go to, since I mentioned the idea of Zionism infecting the churches today, and so this isn't talked about very much. Look at Matthew 23. Let's see what Jesus says about this situation with these Jews, okay? Matthew 23:39. 2339. Let's get the master's opinion about it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Matthew 23:29. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites because ye did because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which kill the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. How can you ye escape the damnation of hell? <laughs> uh -huh. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Well, wasn't that cool? He, he even said the wise guys came to Jesus were sent from God. See that wise man there? Mm -hmm. 
that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Berechias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say to you, all these things shall come upon this generation. They did the wrong thing. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them, which are sent unto thee, how oft would I have gathered thy children together. A picture of Ezekiel 39, verses 23 to 29. Even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. So again, don't, don't dis misunderstand me. I'm not prejudiced against anybody. But I praise the Lord for every Jew that gets saved. Amen. And praise the Lord they're still getting saved and they can be saved. But there is a group of people as a nation that they don't stand very good at uh, standing with God. <laughs> sure. And Paul said it was even true because the early church had to suffer many things because of these people. They were so prejudiced and it's so sad. Right. Okay, so number five, they were destined to bring glory and joy to their founding ministers, to Paul and of course at Christ's coming. Because, amen, they didn't just take the gospel and say, boy, I'm so glad I'm saved and I'm just going to stay at home now and read my Bible and have prayer with my kids and that's going to be it. No, no, they took the gospel to others, amen? Amen. We're commanded to take it and go out in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, amen? amen? Mark 16. And so if you are on fire for the Lord, you want to go get more people on fire for the Lord too, amen? Amen. It only takes a spark to get an ember glowing, you know, and going and get a fire going and pass it on, pass it on, we used to sing. Amen, Sister Joy. Mm -hmm. Amen. So Paul says, hey, they've been out trying to hinder us and Satan's hindering us, but yet for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing are not even ye in the presence of the Lord. Now the truth is on the day of judgment, you're going to be happy to see the people you led to the Lord. The people you handed gospel tracts to. The people you helped disciple learn more about God and Jesus. Because mm -hmm. you'll see them in heaven and that's where it's going to really count. Amen. See, there's a reason why we hand out tracts and tell people the gospel. It's not just to try to build our church. We leave that up to God. Right. Let God build right. His church. That's right. His business. He, he, The Holy Spirit counts according to the book of Acts. Right. It's the Holy Spirit doing all the counting. There's no... Brother Peter getting up saying, well, we need to get 100. We only had 99 this week. None of that gas going on in God's real church. Amen. But it goes on in the corporate churches. Right. Oh, yeah. Because that's what's all, it's all about nickels and noses. Yeah. But we're out to win souls, and we know that in eternity, see, when we go to heaven, it's going to be a, such a blessing because there will be all these people there that we had a part in, the, in them being there. And that's what's going to make it wonderful. And that's what Paul said about these folks. He led them to the Lord. They're continuing to go on. He's left them. He's moving on now. They've got to have a pastor. They're going to continue on as God's church in Thessalonica. And they will and they have. Though it's tough, it was not easy. But boy, they had the fortitude to hang in there and not quit and not compromise. They could have the Judases come and go, but they stayed true. Many went out from us, but they were not of us, Amen. John's going to say. Right. Or they would have continued with us. Mm -hmm. And so Paul says, boy, it's going to be great, though I've been wanting to get back to sea and the devil hasn't let me come. But boy, when I get to go to heaven and get to see you there and I'm going to be rejoicing, I'm going to have a crown in heaven because I led you to the Lord. That's my crown of rejoicing. The Bible speaks of those five different crowns you can get at God's judgment seat. Are you going to get any? Mm. Let's stay busy for the Lord. Let's get them gospel tracts out. Let's tell our friends and neighbors. Amen. What is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. 
So the people we have influenced for the Lord, that's what's going to be our reward. See, not how many times we beat the, the game we were playing and how many times we killed the bad guys and how many times we got resurrected, went in, went in uh, uh, right. having lost the game over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. Mm -hmm. That ain't going to count for nothing when it comes to God. Right. But it's going to be people. You're going to have some people there. Mm -hmm. You know anybody? You got any names? You know any names of anybody? That you've been able to lead to the Lord or tell them about the Lord or disciple them in the Word of God. And you'll get to see them and they'll be with you there in heaven. That's what it's all about. Let's all stand by our heads in prayer. Lord, again, help us to be accountable. Help us to do what's right. Forgive us for our many sins and shortcomings. Help us to spend more time doing what we should be doing in building up your spiritual kingdom, Lord, and trying to get people saved. And in Jesus' name we ask it, amen.